Hello, everyone. Welcome to Developing Palettes. I'm Aaron Loomis coming to you from the Drew Estate Studio. With me today is Seth Geis and from the Bastani Studio, John McTavish. How you guys doing? Doing well, Hola. man. Hola. All right. So let me remove that pin. And uh, today we are talking about the Casa 1910 Soldadera Edition San Petrina. Uh, cigars are Robusto 5x50. Comes out of the Tabacalera La Isla factory in the Dominican Republic. Uh, rappers Connecticut Shade, binders from the Dominican Republic, uh, fillers from Mexico in the Dominican Republic, uh, blended by Manolo Santiago. Uh, price point is $16, and the cigar was released in February of 2023. So, with all that out of the way, Seth, what was your overall experience like with this cigar? Listen, it's, it's a solid looking Connecticut. Um... First third was really enjoyable. Some raisins, lemongrass, cedar, hay, earth. Um, just delivering a really good core Connecticut profile. Um, nice complexity that just kind of carried throughout the entire cigar, medium strength and body. Really good burn and draw. Um, you know, not overly complex or showing a lot of transitioning, but just a good flavor profile. John? Um, yeah, I really like this one. Um, and I and I'll get to an interesting flavor note that I got out of this because I'm sure I'm going to get razzed for it. But I uh, kind of started out with creamy chocolate, mild sweet hay, uh, wood center, tannic wood finish. Just really light plus profile, which was sort of a really nice entry into the first third. Uh, baking spices and sweet graham cracker kind of established the core. And then I don't know if you guys have had those honey sesame seed biscuits, like, like the little wafers or whatever. Yeah. I swear I was getting that sesame seed cracker out of the center of the profile. And I'm like, oh, that's really interesting. I like, and I don't know what. Uh, that I know be, what you're talking about. Um, I was like, oh, that's really interesting. And then I got some red pepper flake uh, sort of on the post drop, medium, medium strength, but it kind of eased into it, which was nice. So not out of the gate. Um, and then kind of more of the same, more combinations of the same with red pepper flake, baking spices, sesame seed. And I, I almost got like a cayenne in the post draw at some point in the second, third. So just a, just a really nice, engaging, complex flavor. Uh, and the last third was kind of more of the same, just, um, you know, a little bit more fuller on the baking spices, um, some nice chocolate notes. Uh, this is, this is real winner. The uh the funny thing is that the um the burn was a complete and total disaster. <laughs> um so it's kind of funny because I'm like, man, if this burned well, I wonder how good this cigar could have been. Uh it it, it it the burn was uneven to start, uh continued to be uneven in the second, third. I uh, needed a touch up, then it went out, then it went out again, then it went out again. Uh so I think I had three relights and a touch up. Um, you know, which normally would just kill the flavor profile, but it seemed to keep, keep on trucking. Uh, draw was perfect. So came away with a pretty good experience. Aaron, what about you? Yeah, for me, the cigar started with toasted cedar, baking spice and chalkiness. Got some light creaminess that joined in and cedar transition to oak. Uh, a bit later, the baking spice transition to black pepper. Uh, second third saw the creaminess depart. And then the final third saw the profile become a bit dry. Um, I, I'm kind of the outlier on this one. For me, the flavor profile was pretty average throughout the cigar. Uh, earth and chalkiness just kind of held the profile back to me. Um, you know, it's a not a typical kinetic shade profile and not one that really appealed to me. So um, I say in the review that I'm not really interested in coming back to it, but you guys had vastly different experiences than me in the flavor category. So I, I may come back to it just to give it a shot and see uh, if I miss something the first round. So, um, but yeah, not the greatest experience for me. All right, let's get into the scores. We are going to start at the top with Seth at 6.92. John gave it a 6.77. I gave it a 5.5. So Seth had that 6.92 matchup for you. Yeah, man. I, I, listen, I, I really liked it. Um, I like the flavor profile that was delivered. It was just kind of a, you know, funky Connecticut um, that, it, you know, that spoke to me. Um, I, I've kind of also liked a lot of the profiles that Casa 1910 has put out there. Um so yeah, I'd come back to it. I mean, especially with the pricing and so forth. But yeah, John. Um, yeah, I mean, this cigar really should have been in up up in the sevens. Um, and it's really that that burn that held it back. I mean, flavor profile wise, I think about this cigar, and I'm like, man, you know, sixteen dollars is not an inexpensive amount, but it's not crazy for the market. And based on the experience, I would pay you know sixteen dollars for that experience, provided the burn was there. I think that's, you know, like I said, I think that artificially held it back. What about you, Aaron? 
Yeah, my score matches up well. I mean, uh, average flavor profile throughout. Um, I had, you know, really good construction, just slightly waviness in the burn and a, a draw that was slightly tighter than I prefer, but nothing that was, you know, a problem. So, um, you know, it was just okay. But, um, you know, maybe I didn't get the sam a good sample with the flavor profile or whatever. I'll come back to it, check it out and see. But um, as of now, not my favorite uh, in this new series out of uh, La Isla. But, um, yeah uh any final thoughts from you guys on this one yeah this is this is this is my favorite cast in 1910 uh and it's mm. not even it's not even close like this was heads above everything else so yeah yeah still gotta work on those secondary bands especially with the white and the gold i think kind of a... yeah you know it's we've talked never, about this never see anything at, <laughs> yeah we talked about this ad nauseum like you cursive font with the white on gold it's just, it, you, you, I mean, I'm literally going in my humidor and I'm having to hold it up like to my nose to be able to read it. And I like, and I'm looking for this cigar in my humidor yeah. and I'm like, is this a San Frantini? I don't, I don't know. And that should never be the case. Yeah. All right. Wherever you're catching this video, be sure to like and subscribe and check out the full written review on the website, developmentpalace.com. Follow us on the social media channels and you can catch all of our review recaps on podcasts, so iTunes, Google Play, and Podbean. Thank you for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next one. Solidera.